U.S. Open. We're at Mohegan Sun in Uncasville, Connecticut, and this week, a very narrow margin between success and failure. This afternoon, we'll crown both the men's and women's U.S. Open champions. On the women's side, qualifying for her second straight U.S. Open finals, Kim Adler. She'll face one of the top international stars from Australia, Cara Honeychurch. The winner will take on our top seed, two-time winner, recently married, Linda Barnes. Yeah! On the men's side, in the opening game, former PBA Rookie of the Year Jason Couch. He'll square off against two-time winner Dave Arnold. Our top seed, a three-time PBA champion, holder of 63 300 games, Bob Learn Jr. We're inside the Mohegan Sun Casino and Resort. And good afternoon, we're at Mohegan Sun in Uncasville, Connecticut. It's Bowling's U.S. Open, presented by AMF. Hi everyone, I'm Phil Ferguson. Great to have you by for the next 90 minutes or so. When you talk about a major, it's exciting. And it's going to be a crowded broadcast booth. Working the action, Jan Schmidt, who's won on the women's tour, along with my other partner, Marshall Holman, who is a former U.S. Open champion. We'll get to Marshall in a minute. Let's talk to Jan first of all about the ladies. Jan, when you take a look at this field of three, kind of an international flavor. There is, and the international players did quite well this week, but the biggest surprise, Cara Honeychurch, all the way from Australia, she said she came to learn. Well, she's a quick study because she looked poised like a veteran last night under pressure. Now, today could be a different story. She'll have to handle the pressure of the arena setting, the tea lights, the thought of a U.S. Open title, and her first opponent, Kim Adler, who's no stranger to television and who has the experience of a U.S. Open arena finals under her belt from last year. Kim shot some big numbers last night. She's going to be tough. If Cara gets past her, though, she'll have to face our top seed, Linda Barnes, known to you as Linda Nori, who's having perhaps the biggest week of her life. Not only is she leading the U.S. Open, but she's on her honeymoon. Well, not quite yet, and she'll have time for that later on. That honeymoon, it'll come. You know, got to bowl today and win, right? Marshall Holman, 22 PBA titles, PBA Hall of Famer. You won this big event before, and you take a look at this field of three, arena-style setting. The guy on top, Bob Learn, always bowls well in this setting, doesn't he? Well, Phil, you're absolutely right, and Bob Learn, he is the story. He likes to throw the ball both hard and straight, but he can hook the ball as well, so he's a very versatile player. Now, Bob Learn also likes to bowl in the arena setting. In 1996, he won the flagship City Open in his hometown of Erie, Pennsylvania. For four games, all he did was average 282. Now, if Bob Learn is going to win this tournament, first he's going to have to get by the two people in the semifinal match, Dave Arnold and Jason Couch. Dave Arnold, he's a consummate stroker, throws the ball straight from the outside trajectory for the most part. He can throw it, hook it a little bit as well, but he likes to throw the ball mostly straight. He's not the kind of player that's going to get the crowd involved too much. He's more of a calm demeanor, keeps it within himself. Jason Couch, on the other hand, he loves to get the crowd behind him. He's going to be hooping and hollering, getting everybody to try and support him, to help him get to that sixth title. He's made the show five times this year. So far, five losses and five televised appearances. Looking to turn that around today. Should be a great show. Phil, back up to you. All right, thanks a lot, Marshall. Boy, what an exciting week. 342 competitors, uh, 32 games of qualifying, 24 games of match play, and the uh, top seed following match play advances to uh, today's final as that top seed. So really a long, grueling week, right, Jen? Oh, it sure is tough. You know, I didn't have to bowl as long as the rest of the people, unfortunately. <laughs> but 56 games, and then depending upon how many graphics they went through, up to 71 games to get here. And you talk about the competition, 71 games under this kind of pressure. You need a week off after this event. However, the ladies don't have a week off. They don't even have a day off. Our next tournament, uh, Pro-Ams, are going on right now, and competition starts tomorrow morning, so they're going to really have to catch a late flight and get out there. That's in Lexington. Won't be able to drive that one to make it in time. So now we take a look at Cara Honeychurch, 27 years old, and boy, uh, kind of a surprise. She came over here uh, as a learning experience. She did. She was hoping to learn some stuff, and she definitely learned it. First shot. And I thought she'd be kind of intimidated, but it doesn't look like it. Well, she threw that one pretty. So Honeychurch with a strike to start off this opening match. You're in Bowling's U.S. Open. Kim Adler. Uh, I guess one word for Kim, uh, Jan, that would be stoic because... Throughout the entire tournament, I, I believe she's this way all the time, getting ready, preparing herself mentally, physically for this action. She does everything the same every time. 
a stone face. You would never see her, almost never smile while she's bowling. But up just a little bit. And you certainly won't see her smile there. A little slow on her speed with the break there before she started, but Kim is so tough on the lanes. I watched her last night. It was incredible. Here with a little more ball speed, it would have held pocket, but jumps the nose, leaving the 4-7-10. You know, you say with a lot of practice, how can they throw an opening shot like that when you have an hour practice? Well, you do sit down and, and break a little bit while we did our opening things before she gets up and starts the match. So she might get a little stiff, a little slow, plus the nerves. I mean, I don't care how experienced you are. You have to have a little nerve stepping up in front of this big crowd. And we had a little problem uh, right before the show, and this is a live telecast, uh, some broken glass. Well, the light above the pins broke and fell onto the lane. Now, this is very critical because they can't just wipe it off because they could have wiped all the conditioner off the lane and thereby changed the condition. Normally, what we do is wipe it off, strip the lane, re-oil, and let the players warm up again. But obviously, no time to do that with a live telecast. They had to pick the glass off piece by piece. Second shot. What's better shot for Kim Adler? Look at the expression. She's here to fight. A honey church, solid international player from uh, down under, from Australia. Take a look uh, now at Adler's shot. Flush in the hole. She's playing the lanes similar to how she played them. Oh, yeah. Mm. Right. Her goal, honey church at the start of the week, was really just to make the top 24, and here she is on the televised finals. Right? She said, you know, hey, first the 45, then 24, then, oh, my God, the top 15, and now I'm here. To her, in a way, there's not a lot of pressure on her. No one expects her to win here. Leaving just the nine, you saw her uh, standings by round, and she was really among the top ten throughout the entire week, so she came out of the gate strong. This ball's going to come up very late. Just turning over there in the last ten feet, head pin off the wall. Lucky to take out the seven pin at the last second. We talked about the pressure issue. She felt there's less pressure on her than when she bowls internationally, because there they expect her to win. Here she said, I'm a nobody. They don't expect me to do anything. Honey Church, able to pick up the spare. She says next year hopes to compete in uh, 10 to 12 events on the ladies' tour. She found it very easy to uh, get acclimated with the other ladies. She thought that might be a problem, but uh, she fit right in. She did, and she, and she said she had nothing negative to report. The women were all so kind to her. Everyone was helpful. helpful. I met Kara at an AMF reception for the international players way back last Saturday night, and everyone has just taken her, also because she's very personable. Honey Church in the third. So a nice start to this uh, international star with a strike, spare strike is Adler. I think, is up now in the third. Yeah, Kim's looking for a re-rack right now. She does not like something in the spot of the pins. Now, how many re-racks uh, during the game are you allowed to have? For television, we're normally allowed only two re-racks. Now, it was a little bit different this week with the U.S. Open men and women. Tough to see there if anything's off spot. But the men, I believe, are allowed uh, two re-racks during the week. We're allowed five per game during the week. And so we compromised this week and we're allowed three throughout the week. Boy, Wendy McPherson averaging 219 on tour, way out in front for the ladies. Mm, big shot. So Adler, a, a big double. And, uh, you know, she's very stoic. She talks about the action. She talks about what goes through her mind during a round. I'm, I'm trying to visualize the feeling of what I want to accomplish through the placement of the ball. That's really what I focused a lot on this week and what I've really worked on the last eight weeks. And it's made me a lot more consistent and uh, I think that that's what makes me so stoic looking on TV. Um, it's just my way of being prepared for my shots. But she has a radiant smile. She ought to use it a little more often. And she does use it All off right. the lanes. And she talked about feeling of the great players, they bowl by feel. Adler with a big strike, so she's right back in the match. We got a dandy going on here. The winner to face, Linda Barnes. Fun by Dickies, a legend in work. And by New Skin Liquid Bandage, waterproof and thin.
Well, nice look at the trophy that awaits the winner. Kara Honeychurch from Australia. Up in the fourth, she trails now by nine, but uh, she has uh, thrown three good shots. The Bowler of the Year, 1996, internationally, and she looks like uh, she'll have a nice career on the women's tour should she decide really to bowl in uh, many events. It definitely looks like she will. She's been distracted there, uh, someone moving around in the crowd, and again, this is an atmosphere a little bit different. Mm -hmm. We, at least the PWBA, don't generally have people sitting that far down the lanes. So it is going to be a different experience for all the players. Although she said last night she pulled in the tournament in Australia where it was in the shopping center. So you <laughs> got to watch out for shopping carts. <laughs> she did. Oh, beautiful shot. Wow, that's hard to believe. Watching this lady, Phil, she told us that she's rather reserved and lacking in confidence. Now you watch her throw a shot like that and say, how could you be lacking in confidence? But hey, she said she just doesn't let it affect her. She just relaxes and does what she has to do. The big strike in the fourth now puts her up by one over Kim Adler. And boy, look at the uh, claw that she has on that left hand. Well, she's wearing a, a wrist guard that is uh, movable. She can cup the wrist up or back, and this allows her, if she cups it up, she'll get a little more mm -hmm. turn or, or hook on the ball. And if she breaks it back, she can flatten that ball out to shoot her spares. Fifth frame. Not quite able to get it up. A little bit light. 3-9. She has a four-step approach, starts the ball waist high, real relaxed arm swing, and a good finish position, good knee bend, good follow through. I noticed when she did get under a little pressure, she became a little more mechanical and didn't get the carry. If she can keep the arm swing relaxed, I think she'll do fine. Able to convert the spare, and that's not always easy, that, that particular spare. I thought that'd be challenging out there. Uh, the middles were hooking a fair amount, and if you get it across too quickly, it's going to hook away. So Adler up now by one. And she is working on a double in the fifth frame. And it appears the little mishap on lane one just prior to the show really hasn't affected uh, the players or the bowling. No, and you wonder about that because they had to sit. They were just getting in their groove, knowing we we're going to start in a few minutes, and they had to sit down and wait. Well, Adler, after a slow start, has come back four in a row, and she leads by 11. Here it is from the ground level. Look at that plane, about 15, sent it out to almost the fifth board. Coming back hard. And that's picture perfect. Well, what's nice is with the men and women bowling together um, in the particular center for the qualifying and match play, it was a lot of fun for the spectators and really saw some great bowling. Some of the scores, some of the matches were... You had to win the best three out of five last night in the brackets. And some of those matches, each game, each one was within one or two pins. Well, Adler's cooking here on a hot day here in Uncasville, Connecticut. She has now thrown five in a row, and she leads by 21. And so now you wonder, with uh, the rookie, with Honey Church, how uh, somebody firing five straight strikes, how that will affect her, and we're soon going to find out. I even asked her if she'd be more intimidated by Kim Adler because of her stoke nature on the approach and on the lanes. And she said, no, it doesn't matter. All these women are so good, it doesn't matter who I'm bowling. Honey Church down by 21, up in the sixth. Beautiful style. Nice result. And she is definitely not backing down. Boy, timing just right. Beautiful at the uh, foul line, so Honey Church with a strike in the sixth, but she has to start stringing some together. Kim Adler not looking down. You can see that pin on her collar. That's a space shuttle pin given to her by Carl Ritter of the BPAA. She saw his and liked it. He mm -hmm. gave it to her for good luck. She picked up the four, six, seven, ten for the first time in her career. So you are a bit superstitious. A bit. Mm -hmm. She is a little more than, than I thought she was. That was interesting last night. Way out. Tried to get a fortuitous kick. And she's been coming a little light on lane one. Looks like the conditioner may be a little longer for her before her ball picks up a roll. See how far it's skidding? It's very late before it turns over. She's fortunate just to leave the three pin. Almost tripped it forward. Uh -huh. 
picks up the spare. So Honeychurch still in the ball game, but it's Kim Adler. She has strung five in a row here at Bowling's U.S. Open. Casino and Gambling Resort. And speaking of action, let's uh, send it on down to Marshall Holman, who's got our tournament leader. Marsh. Uh, thank you very much, Phil. I'm here with Linda Barnes. Uh, and, and Linda, right now, it looks as if uh, you're probably going to be bowling against Kim Adler. She's the hot one. Rule over a 30-pin lead. How do you like your chances against her? Well, I'm just going to go out and bowl the pins. Either one of them, they're great players. I mean, once it got to the final 16 players, I mean, it was a great field. So I'm just going to come out and do the best I can and see what happens. All right. Best of luck to you. Thanks. Phil, back up to you. And you had mentioned before, and we'll get to that in a minute. Linda Barnes, a big week, uh, got married to PBA pro Chris Barnes, who recently picked up his second PBA win, so it's been kind of an extended honeymoon, and she also uh, would love to pick up that top prize, and we'll get into that a little bit, because she's going to get a new car. <laughs> we'll talk about that. Kim Adler now trying to make it six in a row, trying to put this thing away. Not, not yet, but I mean, six in a row after that opening frame, that first frame, she really settled down quickly. She did, and I'm sure she thought about it and regrouped. She said last year in the U.S. Open show, the screens up here that people can see really distracted her a little bit. They were on a little delay. The crowd reacted later. She said, I know what to expect now, and I'm just going to settle in and do what I have to do. And you could see it. She sat down after that first frame and said, that's it. 31-pin lead for Adler, Phil Ferguson, along with Jan Schmidt in the booth. And, Jan, you've bowled a lot and won a PBA title, a women's PBA title. And uh, the lights sometimes tend to, the first few times out there, a little bit nerve-wracking. They definitely are. It's a, it's a whole different atmosphere, even though you figure you're only bowling. And you look at all the people and the lights. Stop. She's rocked in this place. And she uh, knows that it's not over. I mean, if she wins this game and she's up now by... Uh, 41. She still has to take on Linda Barnes, who had a sensational week. So it's not over. You got to kind of be a little bit reserved. You do. Now, Cara here with her mom, Charlene, came over with her. That was great. And uh, she's a single lady, but engaged. Sorry, guys. She's engaged <laughs> to Jim Sultan. I'm going to be married January 22nd of 2000. Well, that check will pay for airfare back to Australia. No, big payday in this tournament. Cara Honeychurch with a strike, and we talked to her about what she learned this week coming over to the States. I've learnt heaps. Uh, I've, learnt, I've learnt a lot about adjustments. I've learnt how important it is to have the right equipment. Um, I guess really in the amateur circuit, we're, we're not really prone to sort of drilling up three and four balls during the week, and um, that's really been uh, a, a real learning experience for me, and just goes to show you how important it is to have the right ball in your hand. Honeychurch, 148 through 7. She has bowled very well. She can be proud of herself. She just ran into somebody that didn't want to quit. Honeychurch can go off the sheet with 238. Adler can fire 279. However, she has to still get up and bowl in the ninth and 10th. So Honeychurch can put some pressure on uh, Adler. Kim Adler needs to keep marking here. Kim also wears a pretty big wristband. A lot of the ladies do. Once again, Adler making back-to-back -back U.S. Open shows. Mm. 3-6-10. Yeah, coming up high. Not quite as aggressive with that shot. Are you surprised at all at the shot? No, I think so. her adrenaline was getting so high. You could see how intense she was. Maybe she was trying to bring herself back down, as you just mentioned. She needs to keep it in control and a little bit of let-up, maybe on ball speed, leaving the 3-6-10. Now, she needs to convert this. She needs to keep marking if she wants to close this out. Possible, once again, 238 for Honeychurch, but a spare here. She made a mark in the 10. Big mistake by Kim Adler. Same expression on her face after a miss in the ninth. You see, she took her wristband off so she wouldn't hook it, and the ball's just sailing. Misses the three-pin, no turn, no revolution on that ball. Kim often will remove her wristband to shoot the right side spares to not hook it. Adler leads by 16, but cannot, uh, should she get a spare here? Spare I mean, she still can't shut out Honeychurch. No, she'll need to double to shut her out. Double five to win this first match and move on to face our tournament leader. Linda Barnes.
Wow, what a turn of events. Phil, I can't even... I would have never imagined this would happen. Well, I think midway through this ballgame, 6-7th frame, Honeychurch thought she was out of it, maybe, but uh, Adler has opened the door. She was hoping this would carry. Come on. Possible 234 for Adler with a spare and a strike. Well, she's leaving it open. Kara could double with a good count and win. This is the U.S. Open, a prestigious title for both the men and women, one of the majors. Wow, it's tough for this gal. It's got to be. She thought she lost this match. Now she's sitting there and has to regroup, get her head back on and go, okay, now I can throw a double and win. Adler, final shot of this opening match. But again, both performers coming out, throwing a lot of strikes. A ring and tension. But a fine game for Kim Adler, a 2.33. So now it's up to Honeychurch to answer. Double six, and she's a winner. Well, I watched her in several, several of the games yesterday, and she needed a double, and she got it almost every time. Well, she's uh, on this lane. She has struck the last uh, three times, I believe, on lane two, installed lanes by AMF. Um, so if she doubles, gets six. She likes this lane. Let's see what happens. Goes through a bit of a routine. Most players do that. Nice extension. <laughs> and through the nose. So Kim Adler wasn't watching, but the reaction from the crowd told the story. Kim Adler will move on and take on Linda Barnes for the U.S. Open Championship. AMF presents. Welcome back. The DeMaria Open begins tomorrow right here on ESPN and the Deuce ESPN 2. ESPN part of the Go Network, go.com. And so exciting tennis action tomorrow. But some exciting action here in the opening match as Kim Adler strong seven strikes. And she would need all of them to beat Cara Honeychurch, the final 233 to 214. Boy, surprising uh, opening game, Jan. Definitely, Kim started off with that shaky start, then strung him. You thought she had control of the match. Boom, ninth frame. Chop a spare gone. And she actually slid by it. And, and it looked like Kara was going to step up and take it over. Incredible the way that changed and then changed back. What a gamut of emotions for these two players to go through. Beautiful atmosphere here. Mohegan Sun, Huntersville, Connecticut. Boy, a lot going on outside here. This uh, gambling resort. Right now, Linda Barnes, our top seeded player, getting ready. A few words from her husband. Chris Barnes, and interesting because uh, Linda told me that the two don't coach each other, won't coach each other, G get into get into trouble yeah. coaching one another. Well, you know how husband and wife go, you yeah. know, I remember my husband trying to teach me to play golf, it didn't work too well. So they root on one another, but when it comes to coaching, leave it to the, uh, the ball reps, etc. That's right, and but she said Chris was such a big help to her emotionally. And he has, in a sense, trained her mentally because he helped her, how she put it, he helped her realize what intensity was and how to channel it to fit her game because she lacked intensity in an individual atmosphere because she's a team player. So that was a difficult thing, and she said Chris is the one who has brought her around in that. Finishing up the practice shots, and then it will be the handshake and get going here for the championship match. Bowling U.S. Open presented by AMF. Adler taking on Barnes and Kim Adler will step up. And again, facial expression, the same throughout the entire match. Gets a little excited, but the facial expression stays the same even when she opened in that ninth frame. I didn't see a smile on her face last night until they said, you made the show. <laughs> so Adler's first shot here in the championship match, trying to bring it back. Able to kick it out. Wow, she sent that one way right. That's not, she hasn't been playing that far right. That was all the way out to about the second board. 
found a little bit of hook out there, though. Sometimes a mistake like that will help you for the rest of the match. And that's what the players do, try to create some area. Certainly. That's the name of the game today. Bowling has changed quite a bit. Good luck at Linda Barnes. First shot. <laughs> Crossing over left. Going Brooklyn a bit. And again, it may be the same case as Kim Adler. Opening shot. Needs to relax a little bit. Linda has a five-step approach. Very small first step. She's trying to push left. Deep knee bend. And a strong follow-through. She's been really working to push the ball left so she can get her arm swing right and bring it back around. Her push away may not have been exactly good on that shot. Picks up the spare. Always a bit uh, tentative. A, bit, a bit nervous uh, on that first shot. Now she's settled in with that spare. Adler with a strike. Barnes with a spare. And she started off slowly. Average 182 in the opening round. 96. And then made her way up the ladder to the uh, top seed. And included in that a 300 game. That was quite a climb. 300 that first game of the fourth round. A oh, little bit better speed. Able to kick it out. Yeah, those pins were slow dancing on that shot. But seven pin went out at the last second. Linda, a little bit more direct player than Kim Adler. But both playing lanes are similar. Linda choosing uh, to actually point the ball a bit. Kim showed me a lot last night in that uh, best of five match with Tish Johnson, a proven player. Uh, she was down. She opened two out of the first three frames. And Tish had it going. But she was able to come back and beat Tish Johnson three straight games to make it. Stubborn as my five-year-old in the candy shop. <laughs> now you can see she moved a little left and tried to give that more room, sending it right because she went high on that last shot on that lane, giving it a little room, but six pin stands up in the channel. Come on. You know, her stare could knock a few things down, <laughs> but it didn't get that ten pin. This match even. Should she pick up this 10-pin? Able to do that. I mean, you can't miss many 10-pins and make it to this level, make it to this point in the U.S. Open. Now, single pin spares are, are just routine for the professionals. You'll, you'll almost never see them missed. Kim has won 10 titles, a couple of majors. In fact, uh, both these players uh, used to winning majors because uh, Linda Barnes also won uh, the Queens. That's the major event. Uh, but for Kim Adler, she won Samstown Invitational in 97. Uh, also the Hammer Championship in 96. Considered major events on the women's tour. Included in that group of 10, trying to make it 11 titles. Got the ball to react on the back end. That was a beautiful shot. Good, crisp, clean release. And you can see it, the six slapping out the ten. Barnes up in the third frame. Took about five weeks off, hurt her lower back. Also had to take a couple weeks off to get prepared for the ball, wedding. She is really pulling the ball right now. She's definitely missing left of target. And she did work on so many things that it's easy for her to have a little confusion now. She went and worked with Jerry Edwards in Akron, Ohio, on her way here. Uh, worked on having her hand on the side of the ball, pushing left, small first step, loose arm swing, weight on it. So many things that she's trying to do correctly. Picks up the spare. We talked about uh, recently being married and how they fit this all in with Chris, her husband, also a pro bowler. Chris and I, we've kind of been shopping the last couple of weeks looking at cars, and he kept going toward the used car. People who know Chris know he's a little frugal with his money, so he was looking at the used cars, and I kept going to the new cars, and he made a deal with me that if one of us made the show this week, that uh, we'd get the new car, so there was a little incentive there. Oh, yeah, new car. Leaves just the seven pin. And that was a little bit better shot, still coming up a little high. She was teasing that she she obviously wanted the uh, new car way more than Chris because Chris didn't make the show. It was Chris Barnes, her husband. And he was the rookie of the, rookie oh, of the year last year. He's second in earnings right now this year on tour. Great year. Spare. Picks up the spare, so... Linda Barnes, three spares out of the first four frames is still only down a single pin. This is the championship match in the U.S. Open. And to her husband, uh, Chris Barnes, trying to figure some things out. 
She's talking about her arm swing, and she said her arm swing's going left, which is what we talked about. It has to do with her push away. She may need to adjust her push away a little bit. And she just, she's feeling a little rushed right now. Um, we're not used to, we haven't had a live show in a number of events, and so normally the players can have pretty much as much time as they want getting ready to start. So for her, this was a little different scenario. Kim Adler up in the fourth. This is where she got it going this time in the opening match, which is from seven in a row. Make it two. Out to an 11 pin lead over Linda Barnes. You call that one. This is where she she's moving early. She is not going to wait. She's going to jump off to the biggest lead she can. Yes. Now for Kim, she's able to keep that ball speed up I and mean, keeping it around the 1-3 pocket. Linda has had some problems, which you mentioned about her arm swing. And let's see if she can figure it out when she steps up in the uh, fifth frame. But Kim Adler now working on three in a row in the fifth. All business. Got it out. She has a little swing area and uh, able to hit the pocket, still left the 10 pin, but I'm sure she feels pretty comfortable right now. Yeah, she definitely has a good shot to the pocket as long as she starts it going to the right. A little bit of a soft 10 there. Again, removed her wristband so she can flatten it out for the spare. She's going to change balls using a plastic ball that'll slide across the lane. Most players do that nowadays. Right. Most of them do. Yeah, spare ball, almost essential, especially when, when you're moving across a house, different lanes, different conditions. Boy, she opened the door for uh, Cara Honeychurch by opening in the ninth frame last game, but she still was able to win the match, and here she does it now in the uh, fifth frame. Now, my guess, Phil, is that's a direct result of what happened in the ninth frame. The 3-6-10, the ball slid so much for her that I think now she went, okay, uh, I don't want it to slide too much going at the 10 pin, and she actually rotated a little bit, and she hooked by it. Come on, roll ball, roll ball, three. Yes! Right here. Well, she was sitting down and took the lead, a two pin lead. Okay, now if you could see the difference in the shots earlier, you could see she settled down by talking to Chris. Again, he's very good for her emotionally. She sent that ball much straighter down the lane, didn't pull it left to target, got it into a good roll. Way to go, Chris. Way to help her through it. And, and it's just important for everyone to have that, no matter who you are. If you have somebody you can talk to about it, you can get a better feel. Chris won his first tournament in an arena-style setting in Erie. Sit, 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 sit! She wanted that one to sit. Wow. Just the nine. Fortunate. Exactly. That could have been tough. She almost had the seven nine stand and watched the ball jump the last minute. She's yelling, sit. Not happening. Well, Linda started off slow this week. Averaged 182 after eight games. Still struggling after round two. She was still uh -oh. a below uh, 200 average and she misses the single pin. Okay, look, I didn't mean to mention that the players almost never miss a single <laughs> pin spare. This doesn't happen. This is not the norm. And Linda got it going in the third uh, eight-game block. She almost looked like she dropped that shot. It was off her hand extremely early. Never got it to, the, to her target at all. So Kim now up by 10, sitting on the bench, and she comes up with the lead up in the sixth frame. <laughs> And that miss nine pin may really, that's going to turn Kim Adler into a machine right here. Look at this. Sending it right. Good ball speed. Ball hits light, dice, and everything to the left. That's the name of the game now, huh? Hit them light, shake them up a little bit. Now Ooh. she's getting pumped up. Major championship on the line. Well, Kim involved in a lot of things, not just bowling, a lot of cross-training, rock climbing. Uh, she basically has done it all, trying to get herself in shape. Uh-oh. Well, well, not that it was a mistake, but she, I think, that got a little right of her target. It was a mistake, definitely. She uh, looked to the skies for that, and rightfully so. Look at this. She knows it's almost in the channel. Thank you. So a huge double for Adler, and Barnes has set, to respond. Set. She's had problems on that lane. 
Uh, she's she's saying she's coming around every shot. She's just not comfortable right now. And when you change a lot of things and work on a lot of things, and get under the pressure of going for a U.S. Open title. The old habits come out, and it's sometimes hard to continue what you've worked on all week. That's better. So she picks up the spare. Once again, Linda recently married to uh, Chris Barnes, a uh, member of the Pro Tour, and she said they didn't get along at first, but uh, I guess they got lined up. I, I, I guess they worked it out somehow. Yeah. <laughs> and she says that uh, she enjoys watching Chris bowl when he bowls well. Well, they were married on the 17th. Um, Open gifts Sunday the next day, and family went home Monday, and then Wednesday came out, started driving to the U.S. Open. Roll. There it is. Yes. Much better shot. Not giving up about Beautiful. The if you see the projection straight up the lane, you know it's going to be a good shot out of Linda. Kim watching, and Kim now coming up in the eighth frame. So eighth and ninth. She stumbled a bit in the last game, opening in that ninth frame. So I, I know that I'm not sure that's on her mind. I know you just want to think positive thoughts, don't you? Yeah, it's not on Kim's mind. She is the best at putting that behind her. She d she will think about it later on when she's done, but not now while she's bowling this match. Watch her style. This is from many years of hard work, a lot of practice. A lot of power with the leg. She has a quick five-step approach, and that's where she gets her speed. Ooh. Sending it right. This is a match if you take it. I don't want it. Here's the feet I'm talking about. Quick feet. Look at how quickly she's moving the feet. Watch the leg power. Look at her generate a good push with the legs. She has a real crisp release. Low backswing, though, so she uses her legs and that release that she has to project the ball down the lane. Still leads by six. Split here in the eighth frame. You should go for one, right? Definitely. On an 8-10, you're going to go for one pin. It was a tough break. She sent it right like she did the last time, but didn't get the mix she did. Interesting match, this championship match. Bowling's U.S. Open, presented by AMF and Adler. Up in the ninth frame, they call it the foundation frame. You certainly want to come through with a strike here and then sit down and kind of regroup and get ready to finish off this match. As Linda Barnes looks down, trying to get herself focused because she has had some problems. Yeah, Linda not wanting to watch what's going on. Kim Adler has to set up a strike right here because Linda Barnes is on a strike in the eighth, so. Maybe a little trifecta action. Ah, she did look up. Oh, my. Got the uh, pin to come up, kick it out of the gut. Wow, that was a late tap on the 10 pin. Trying to get that crowd in it with her. Linda Barnes up in the ninth. She can go off the sheet for 217. Come and 213 for Adler, so she can win it. Yes. There's one. Oh. Now it's the 10th frame. Big reaction out of Linda Barnes on that shot. Because of that strike in the eighth, she can shut her out. Now she needs the first two here on the 10th, and then seven. And, uh, She's a winner. This has had so many uh, swings in this uh, championship match and the first game. Well, I'm on the edge of my seat. It's up and down. I thought you were standing. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Two strikes and seven to win for Linda Barnes. Come on, come on, come on. Hit it, hit it, hit it. Pretty good shot. That was a nice shot. She trusted it. She did not pull it left to target. But she didn't get the tap on the 10 pin like Kim Adler like just did. Look at this, the ball's coming in late. But it looks like it may blow the rack six pin just laying down. Not much energy, didn't have enough to knock the 10 out. Hey, spare. <laughs> Husband, cheering on, but a gutsy performance. Linda Barnes. Started off slow, couldn't well, find the shot, and now a uh, possibility of a 196. Pin count very important here. She needs eight or more to force Kim Adler to strike in the 10th frame. Kim, and I don't know if you want to watch Kim. She won't show much. 
Good shot. Up in the left hand corner. Oh, nice game. Linda Barnes, top seed, and she'll have to wait now to see what Kim Adler does here in the 10th frame, but 195 for Barnes. We still have the men's side of it to come. Kim Adler has to strike, must strike. Boy, what's it like when you need a strike? What's it like when you're sitting there? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'd rather be the one needing the strike. Yeah, Linda has no control right now. Needs a strike. Wow, for the U.S. Open title, what a shot out of Kim Adler. Right down to the final frames. Look at the class out of Linda Barnes. You saw her applaud. Yeah, Linda just bowled a, a, a gutsy performance from Linda Barnes and Kim Adler. Again, it came through in both games. Strung seven in the first game and beat Cara Honeychurch and now in the title match, strike in the tenth. She's looking over. She wants to make sure that score is uh, right. She wants to know what she needs because she's playing so close, close to the channel. If she only needs a couple pins, would she, she needs seven on her first ball. If she, I'm getting this from Del Ballard, our statistician here. She wants to know what she needs. If she needs a good count, she's going to play her strike shot. If she only needed two or three pins, she'd throw it down the middle of the lane, not risk the channel. Clutch shots in the 10th frame. Kim Adler wins bowling's U.S. Open. A hug from runner-up Linda Barnes, but uh, she is victorious today. Kim Adler, and I think maybe going into this finals, she may have been uh, the favorite, but uh, we'll be back and we'll talk to Kim, the champion, in just uh, a couple of minutes. But Kim Adler, the winner of the U.S. Open. Hi, I'm Roland Smith, President and CEO of AMF Bowling. I'd like to relay how pleased we are at AMF to again this year be the primary sponsor of the U.S. Open. You know, I've been with AMF for just 12 short weeks, but in that time, I've really been impressed by the level of participation in this sport. Did you know that bowling was the number one participatory sport in America? And that last year, 53 million Americans bowled? When we asked them why, they said because it's fun. It's a great sport and it's great family entertainment. Our job at AMF is to ensure that we remind you how much fun bowling is and when you do go bowling to provide you a great experience and a great facility to meet your expectations. It's a real privilege to lead this company but the real work and our success will depend upon those 545 bowling center managers and their teams and all the people in our production facilities that make pins and lanes and pin spotters. Many of those are watching the program today and to those folks I'd like to say thank you for all your hard work. Thanks for watching, and remember, at AMF, we always meet. Exciting championship matches. Kim Adler comes through in the clutch, beating Linda Barnes, the final 213 to 195. Let's throw it down to my partner, Jan Schmidt. Jan? Thanks, Phil. What a great, exciting match, Kim Adler. And I know you want the money. Roland Smith, president and CEO of AMF Bowling, is here to present you with the check. Kim, congratulations. What a great match. On behalf of AMF, I'm proud to present you a check for $35,000. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much. 35,000 bucks, but there's a beautiful trophy in front of us, and Jane Fawcett from the Hegan tribe is here to present that trophy. Mohegan Sun is proud to host this event, and I'm happy to congratulate you and present this trophy oh, to isn't you. Isn't that beautiful? Thank you very much. I want to thank BPAA, uh, AMF, for sponsoring our tournament. Put this down before I drop it. Mohegan Sun. Also, I'd like to thank uh, Columbia Bowling Balls for helping me out this week a lot, and also to Kegel Training Center, who helped me a great deal on the break with my game. Well, I know you want the traditional green jacket. Don Harris, CEO of the Bowling Proprietors Association of America, is here to put it on. <laughs> Congratulations again, Kim Adler. Back to you, Phil. Kim Adler, the champion, oh, $35,000 for winning this prestigious event. Don't go away. We still have the men to come. Bob Learn Jr. is the top seed first match. Couch taking on our...
here in this area. Such a lot uh, going on, a lot to do, a lot of gambling outside. And I tell you what, the action has been red hot here. We'll see who rolls the dice and comes out a winner here in this first match between Jason Couch and Dave Arnold and Marshall Holman in the booth. And Marshall, when you take a look at these two, kind of contrasting styles, uh, uh, demeanors a little bit. Well, certainly, Jason Couch being the very demonstrative left-handed power player and uh, Dave Arnold uh, just more of a placid demeanor. Doesn't get too excited, but certainly a, a great player. He's won PBA tournaments, been in the thick of competition for many years now. Couch loves to get the crowd going early, so if he starts stringing them, uh, look out. Jason Couch, winner of five titles, all from the top seated spot. There you see the power of Jason Couch driving that seven pin out. Nice way to start this first game here in the U.S. Open. Three players, Couch and Arnold here in match one, and the tournament leader, Bob Learn Jr., Arnold 35. He's been out here 12 years from Gilbert, Arizona, and doesn't really, like Marshall said, doesn't show a lot of emotion. Beautiful roll on that ball. They're letting his ball do the talking. Dave Arnold with a, a, a very, very good style. The, the arm swing is what impresses me the most, Phil. is very straight, very rhythmical. Does not force it down or force it through. Just lets the, the weight of the ball do the work. Strikes to start off this first match. Arnold has won a couple of national titles. Four regional championships. And he hung around uh, the top 10 or 12 all week long. 12th after the opening round. And then made his way up to first after round three. Lost it a bit. They qualified seventh, but uh, they bowled a lot of games. In fact, he bowled 70 games this week, averaging 227. Now a flat 10 for Dave Arnold. The ball coming in a little bit late. Six pin goes in the channel, doesn't drive out the 10 pin. He'll switch balls, even though Dave doesn't really throw a big hook. Still goes with the harder ball. Take the friction away, make it a little easier to make the spares as Jason Couch not really paying attention to his opposition right now, getting ready for his own shot. Trying to pick up the 10 pin. No problem, so strike spare for Arnold. Jason Couch up in the second frame. Big payday on top. And this is, uh, Marshall, you won this tournament a couple of times. What does it mean to win the USO? Well, it's, it, it is a big deal. I mean, it, it's more than just a tournament. It's, you know, it's very cliche to say it's a major, but it, but it is. And, Couch up in the second frame. Again, five national titles, 13 regional championships. Average 226 this week. Trying to bring it back and does just that. He told me before the show he likes this pair a little bit better than when they bowled the, the qualifying match play because he has a little bit more room. So Jason Couch and the U.S. Open. We talked to him about that and what it means. This is the most prestigious tournament to me other than the Tournament of Champions. There is... Nothing but Hall of Famers on that trophy in the U.S. Open, and I would love to be one of them. Might happen. Still got a bowl, a couple of games, win them both. Important for Jason to get out to a good start. However, he doesn't want to get himself too overamped and expend too much energy early. <laughs> both pins are wiggling. Neither one's going to fall. Bad break for Jason Couch. He leaves the six pin and the seven. Looked like it might very well have been a strike. But that's, you know, that's part of what happens to power players. You know, you get the light hit carry, but that little bit of a high hit dies right through the center. Not good odds here in this uh, gambling resort. Four of 60. Just a little over 6%. We'll see how he attacks this split. An open frame after a double for Jason Couch. And we'll take a look at Couch as he tries to get that ball a little further over to the right. Just doesn't cut it quite thin enough. Very difficult split to pick up. He gets the count. He's now down by four as Dave Arnold gets ready to throw his first ball in the third frame. Arnold said he feels just fortunate to be in the finals. This year he's cashed in the seven of the 13 events that he's pulled, and he counters with a split. Speed a little slow on that. Ball cut right through the center of the lane. He leaves the four, the six, the seven, and the nine. And he's got an option here. Does he want to throw the, the ball towards the towards the four pin and slide it over into the into the six and the nine? Or does he want to go the other way and throw it to the six pin?
try and slide that into the four and seven. I think he's going for the six pin. A better chance of getting nine, but tougher to make it. And he just takes the eight, just takes the count. Well, what was a four pin lead for Dave Arnold is Couch. now a 12 pin deficit. So interesting start to this uh, first match. Arnold, who's always around the pocket, uh, throwing the big split. And Jason Couch in the third frame, al although uh, not fortunate that one of those pins did not fall over, but Couch with a split in the third. So a 12 pin advantage now for Jason Couch with Arnold up in the fourth. That's got a hook. That ball was almost in the channel, Phil. That ball was absolutely on the one board, and you could see a look of relief as Arnold Arnold blows a little air out of out of his stomach. Watch that. There's the one board. The, the channel's just right next door, but it hangs on, but it overhooks. Could have been in the channel. Could have been a wide open split. Fortunately, it's just the six and the ten. A spare that Dave Arnold should be able to convert. Got to be careful. It doesn't hook from those gray boards. He almost put it in. The channel able to pick up the spare, so it's Arnold and Couch going at it. Couch now with the early lead. Back with more in a minute. And Adler, who won on the women's side, now the men battling it out, and it's been just that. Jason Couch up in the fourth frame. You know, Phil, Jason's really made three good shots this game. He got the strike in the first and the second frame. Third frame, thought he had a good chance to strike again. Ball came in just a little high, left the wide open split. He's right back on track in the fourth frame. Three strikes out of the first four frames. Leads by 12. Coming up next, last of the majors, women's golf. It's the DeMaria Classic coming up next right here on ESPN. And boy, they can hit some shots. We talked about the women bowlers making some great shots out here this afternoon. The women can tee it up and let it fly. You bet. Julie Inkster going for the third, her third major of the year. What a year she's having. Jason Couch up in the fifth. Working on a strike. Kind of trying to get settled in. Now releases the ball. Out here comes. Powerful. Made a bit of an adjustment on the lane on lane three. Got the ball down further down the lane before it made the break back into the pocket. Averts the split. And you can see a very pleased Jason Couch. So Dave Arnold, after a split in the third, he opened in the third, came back with a spare in the fourth. So he has to get back in the groove, averaging better than 220 here in 1999. And another shot that was just too far to the to the right. Not enough speed. Kind of looked, he looked confused on that. Well, the players are so good, Marshall. What kind of adjustment is he going to make or can he make? Uh, well, yeah, this is virtually an impossible impossible split to make. So, you know, he's probably just going to take the eight, and then uh, that's going to leave him with quite a deficit. He's going to have to move further to the left on the, on the approach, catch a little more conditioner going down the lane. Picks off two, so Dave Arnold now struggling. You know, we, t we talked earlier, excuse me, Phil, we talked earlier about the fact that, that Dave doesn't get too excited. And I, can, and I can go by my own experiences bowling in televised finals. When you're not throwing strikes and when you're throwing open frames, there's nothing to get excited about. Not a lot of fun. No. I'm surprised. Really? You were that way? <laughs> <laughs> and nothing bothered me. Arnold up in the sixth. He trails by 38, still a half a game to go. Better, better shot, much better. I think he took your advice. Well, it looked like he stayed pretty much to the right-hand side of the lane, that shot. Maybe it was just in his release. Jason Cowan still has to stay focused on this match. It's, uh, you know, he's got a comfortable lead at this point, 38 pins, but you can't let your mind wander. Well, he almost didn't even make it to the televised finals. He was bowling Danny Wiseman in the last match last night and uh, really had a commanding lead early in the game and then threw a bad shot. Saw that lead slip away as Dan Wiseman struck out, but uh, Couch was able to mark in the 10th to get here. He doesn't want that to happen today. He wants to take care of business and take care of business early. Jason's worked very hard on his game. He's practiced a lot before this tournament. Take a look at that high backswing. Good knee bend from Jason Couch. All the pins respond. Well, Jason's had a nice year. This is his sixth telecast. Hasn't won this year, but a couple of third-place finishes, including that uh, Brunswick Touring Players Championship at
Freddie Borden's place, Stone Edge Family Fun Center, and three fourth place finishes. He'd like to notch a win. He's been very disappointed with all the opportunities had this year and has not been able to seal the deal. Boy, he's red hot. So Jason Couch has now strung four in a row. Six out of the first seven. He's in the lead. It's not over. Come on back. Bob Loon Jr. waiting to bowl the winner of this match. Dave Arnold up, and he finds himself down by a bunch midway through this first game. Best year on tour, 1993. He won his first title in Sable, New York, earned over 125000 and for any chance right now, Dave Arnold must keep striking. I believe he can shoot 218 if he takes it all the way out. But, uh, boy, Jason Couch working at a 220 pace right now. Doesn't look good for Arnold. Arnold married. Caroline, two children, Alexander and Natalie. Best major finish second in the PBA Nationals. So, Arnold... You know, this has got to be disappointing for Dave because he was telling me last night that he's not so sure how much longer he's going to stay on tour. He's 35 years old. You know, he's married. He'd like to spend more time at home. He's not going to give up. He's still pushing hard. And there's some reaction from Dave Arnold. Strikeout for 218. So Arnold, the last couple of shots, picture perfect. But Jason Couch, really, and he threw that split in the third. You had mentioned that before, Marshall. That could have been a strike. But open on a big split. Bob Learn watching, waiting. You know, we were going to do an interview with Bob Learn, but we're a little short on time. And Bob, Bob told uh, Jan Schmidt that he's going to help us out with time in the next match. He's going to throw nothing but strikes. <laughs> Bit of an errant shot off the hand of Jason Couch. Yeah, keeps Jason Couch at a 223 pace should he make this spare. But if he should miss it, He'd go down to shooting around 210, 211, and Arnold once again can shoot, can bowl a 218 game, so uh, still a match to be had. Jason, the 1992 PBA Rookie of the Year. Trying to pick up the three pin spare. And does a good job to make the 247. A difficult spare, many ways to make it, but lots of ways to miss it, and that's what makes it tough. You just got to love that high back swing. He plants that slide, the slide foot, reaches down the lane. The ball's going to touch the two, the four. The four goes into the seven pin. And Jason breathes a sigh of relief. Jason said for him, really a very consistent week and bowled a, an awful lot of games. But he is very consistent and feels very confident, more, much more so than he has really at uh, any time this year, heading in, into a, a telecast. Yeah, we talked with him just before, the, before he started uh, bowling this match and he said he liked this pair liked the way the ball was rolling down the lane and with reactions like that you can see why a couch makes a great shot but watch the seven and the ten pin are they falling mm. just a little bit late they're done yeah. fold them up that's right you better fall over I think that's what he said <laughs> So a bit of a wake-up call but when Dave Arnold got a couple of uh, strikes and, yeah, and now has three in a row and Couch picked up the spear and came right back with a fiery strike in the ninth. So Arnold up in the ninth can strike out for 218. If he strikes out, he forces Couch to mark in the 10th frame. Jason's not watching. And Arnold does not knock out the 10-pin, half-10, six-pin on the channel, doesn't come back up. For Jason Couch, he's going to have the luxury of knowing that he's won without even having to bowl the 10th frame. Dejected uh, Dave Arnold, but again, to, to get this far, all these players that started play a week ago, and all the games, you got to be proud to make it to the top three. And that is simply a mental mistake. He's known, he knows that he's lost the, the, the opportunity to, to go into the championship match, and, uh, you know, I, that's, a, that's a mistake that you can easily see. He just wasn't paying attention. And if he makes it, Strikes out, it's 190. If he misses it, strikes out, it's 180. It's, it's uh, really academic right now. So as Jason Couch 
sitting, watching, knows that he has the first match wrapped up, but he will take on very tough competitor in Bob Learn Jr. We talked about Learn and wanting to draw a lot of strikes, and he has done that over his career. In fact, 63 career, 300 games, 30 on the Pro Bowlers Tour for Bob Learn Jr. So you're going to want to stick around and, and watch that young man right there compete. It'll be fire against fire when Learn and Couch and square off. Both players love the arena style. For sure, they like to play to the crowd. They're both hams. And I can also relate to that. <laughs> Dave Arnold finishing out here in the semi-final match. Jason Couch, Bob Learn, advantage? Well, advantage right now to Couch because he's, he's, uh, he's the one with the game under his belt, but uh, I'm sure that uh, Jason's wife, Kelly, and his two daughters, Courtney and Haley, are proud of Husband and Papa right now. Dave Arnold finishes out the game. We talked about uh, Jason Couch's consistency over the 69 games this week. He averaged 226, high game 286, low game 183 out of 69 games. That's uh, near league bowling for the entire league for, for an amateur. Jason Couch finishing out here in the 10th frame. And we'll give you the score. Coming back here in a minute, but Jason Couch moves on to face Bob Learn in the championship. Some shots for the competitors here at the Bowling's U.S. Open, presented by AMF, the Mohican Sun, arena style atmosphere. It's Bob Learn taking on Jason Couch. We may see, I mean, you could see a lot of strikes. Well, yeah, you know, and it's been a while since Bob Learn has bowled in competition. As the tournament leader, he didn't have to bowl all of yesterday during the bracket rounds. He bowled the 56 games. He was the number one seed. Went right into uh, Sunday's telecast. Runs first shot. Here it comes. Kicking it out. Playing considerably deeper than Dave Arnold was. Interesting form. Doesn't hold the ball with his left arm. Swings the ball far out to the right. Now he's just eyeballing it, saying strike. Trips the four out. Couch, who defeated Dave Arnold, 240 to 184 in that semifinal match. His first shot in the title game. Pure. Well, Couch is comfortable right now with not only with the, his reaction down the lane, but with the way he's throwing the ball. If he, if he has one mistake, it's that he has a tendency to get a little jerky with his push away and pull the ball down instead of let the, let the weight of the ball just push the ball down naturally. Couch faced Bob Learn once on television, and it was when he uh, defeated Learn earlier this year, 249 to 191. That was in the opening game of the Columbia 300 Open. Second frame. That's got to hurry. And very fortunate trips out the three pin. You can see it off his hand. This ball wasn't going to get back. Very light, barely touches the head pin. Now you got the two. Excuse me, you got the three and the seven. Well, now it's just the seven pin. Good that, break. That ball nearly in the channel. And again. 96% single pin conversions. Jason Couch also switches balls to shoot at his spares. Just doesn't want any friction. Doesn't want the ball to grab the lane. Just hard and straight. Match all even. Bob Learn up in the second frame. For the early 10 pin lead with a strike here on lane four. And he could not have thrown it any better. Trust me, folks, he'll get excited. He's saving himself. Three PBA championships, nine second-place finishes for Bob, and at times he says he gets a little too pumped up, and that hurts him in matches, get a little, and, and getting a little uh, revved up, ready to go. Sometimes when he, when he starts, when he releases his ball, he almost starts running it out before it's off his hand, and very often he can come in high, as you saw how he did during the rounds in position. That's three in a row for Bob Learn, and congratulations to Bob's son, Brandon. 18 years old, he tossed his first 300 game in a men's league uh, earlier this week. He's averaging 222. And there's Stacy and beautiful Brittany watching uh. Dad. They had a good time this week. Took the day off yesterday. They went to see a movie. Took it easy because he was the top seed for today's telecast. 
So Bob learned with three in a row. Jason Couch, strike, spare. Couch up now in the third. That ball made a right-hand turn. Beautiful. Looked for a moment as it might have been a solid eight. The ball was driving very, very hard through the pocket. But all the pins fell down. Ball, look at you just, in fact, the ball did not touch the eight pin. I believe he knocked the five pin into the eight pin. It happened so fast, even in the slow motion. Hard to tell. Jason doesn't care. They're all down. Couch owns one major. That was the 93 Touring Players Championship. Trying to add another one. There's the scoreboard. Almost left it uh, again. Right, same shot he threw on lane four with the ball driving past the eight pin. But all the pins are down. And that lead of Bob learned only ten pins. It's that high swing, and he really thrust hard. Through the zone. Eight pin the last to fall. Four straight strikes for Bob Learn. Now he's cooking, getting it going. Bob Learn with the first four. Jason Couch strikes bare, then a double. 20 pin lead for Learn Jr. Learn. Had a consistent year, but uh, certainly like to cap it off with a win here. Third telecast of 99, finished third in Portland, fifth in Austin. What happened on that shot, Marshall? Well, Learn thought he threw the ball good. But he did not project the ball far enough down the lane. The ball hooked early. Leaves the three, the six, and the ten. Ball's making its move towards the pocket too soon. Full on the head pin. Turned himself into a very good spare shooter. He'll throw the ball hard and very straight. And no problem. So Learn picks it up. Those of you just tuning in, expecting to see uh, women's golf. We'll be going to that uh, within just moments here on ESPN. Great to have you by. This is the championship match of the U.S. Open. Major championship on the Pro Bowlers uh, Tour for these players. Jason Couch looking for his second major win. Bob Learn looking for his uh, fourth win. Right now it's uh, Couch and Learn in quite a battle. And the momentum right now goes to Couch's side. Learn stopped striking, gave Couch the opening. He cut 10 more pins off that lead, and he does with a strike in the, on lane four in the fifth frame. It's just a seven pin lead. High back swing, we're familiar looking at this. We've seen it all year. 10 in the pit, responsive. Boy, what a title match. Now the women gave us very exciting competition. The men not uh, giving us anything but the same. Kim Adler, champion for the women. She pockets $35,000. That's what these guys are going for. The prize fund's the same for both men and women. And another great shot from Jason Couch. Jason Couch right now with four in a row takes the three-pin lead as he goes for the U.S. Open Championship. AMF always means fun by Dickies, a legend in work, and by New Skin Liquid Bandage, waterproof and thin. This is the U.S. Open, and those of you uh, tuning in to women's golf, the LPGA, the Demaria Classic in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, that major championship will be going to that in just minutes as a cell phone. I always love those cell phones. So Bob Learn steps back, and the phone wasn't for Bob. So he's back up on <laughs> the approach, uh, ready to go. But we'll go to golf here in just uh, a few moments. This is the championship match of the U.S. Open. Learn up in the sixth. Got to hurry. Oh, yeah, that ball hooked back hard. Watch this. Bob Learn releases this ball. It's going to go very close to the channel, and then here she comes. Hard into the pocket. Not unlike Jason Couch's ball driving past the nine pin for Bob Learn. 
from the top seed, two and three, with just about a 200 average. Oh, and a solid seven. Tough break for Bob. Now the ball came in just a little bit high, but you know, 95% of the time, this will strike. Ball's hooking a little bit soon. Watch the four pin, it goes straight back, doesn't get knocked into the seven pin. Tough break, got to put it behind him, hard and straight, make the spare. As he does, picks up that seven pin for Learn, whose best year, 96, when he earned over $230,000, including a perfect game at the uh, flagship open at the Erie Civic Center. That uh, day, Bob set quite a record, didn't he, Marshall? He bowled uh, quite a set, averaging 283-plus. Yeah, it, it scores that uh, I would need a calculator to figure. <laughs> Those are just uh, unbelievable in 1996 uh, what he did in those four games, that's got to be a record that can't be beat. Jason Couch, four in a row. Oh, there it is. There's the solid eight pin, and he's been tantalizingly close to leaving that the entire game. You'll see as his ball drives through, this is flush in the one-two pocket, but it's right past the eight pin. The reaction... He's seen that before, believe me, folks. He's seen that many times. And that's a combination of, of his strength in his release and the dynamic bowling balls that have very little respect for the pins. Picks it up, but instead of five in a row, and that one stung in the seventh frame. Two-pin lead for Jason Couch. And interesting, you know, both the players in the last frame made very good shots. As Jason Couch takes a re-rack, doesn't like the way the pins look. Probably the one-two a little close together. Both the players, power players, both left power shots. Couch with the with the nine pin. Excuse me, Couch with Couch with the eight pin and Learn with the seven. Take a look at Bob Learn, left-hand corner, watching, contemplating, and Jason Couch ready to throw in the eighth frame. That's a strike. And I think he may have moved a little bit to his right to catch a little more oil to make sure that that solid eight doesn't happen again. Bob Learn's certainly been on his game today, throwing the ball very well. There's the score, starting off with four in a row. You see the one-handed delivery. Soft 10 for Learn. He expects a lot out of himself, and when he doesn't, when he doesn't strike, it, he questions as to why it doesn't happen. Well, this is why. Ball a little late, half pocket. You see the six pin lays in the channel, does not come out and knock out the ten pin. Couch cannot be shut out. Learn going for the ten pin. High game this week, 289. Low game of 164. Throw it hard and straight. Fix it up. Now we move into the ninth frame, and uh, we've got a dandy, don't we, Marsh? Well, three pins separate these two champions. Learn the best that he could shoot, 246. Couch can strike out for 259. So uh, the advantage goes to Jason Couch. Jason usually doesn't watch his opponent. Learn releases the ball. Comes back in another 10 pin as Learn goes down to one knee over on lane one. And the same, sh same shot he threw in the last frame, Phil. Soft 10. Ball just did not quite get back up to the pocket full enough. Actually, if it had been a little lighter, he might have opened the pins up and, and struck, but just got stuck in that half pocket zone. The reason the couch doesn't watch is that he doesn't want to see his opponent getting a good break that might make him feel unlucky. So he, he doesn't watch, doesn't like to pay attention. Picks up the bear. You can hear from the crowd anyway, can't you, Marshall? Well, you can, yeah, you can tell immediately as to whether the pins have fallen down or not. So now Jason up in the ninth and tenth. Well, if, if Couch can strike on this ball and then mark in the tenth frame with a decent fill, Phil, he's your winner. <laughs> Couch up in the ninth frame. Learn with his eyes closed. That's got to stop. That ball, not enough energy, not enough speed down the lane. 
It's the two, the four, the seven on the left-hand side of the lane. Well, learn now the just six opening the ten his, on the right. Opening his eyes, so. You can see it goes right through the heart. He leaves the three on the left and the two on the right. A split that is actually easier to make than it looks, Phil. He needs to get the ball to the left-hand side of that two pin, slide it over into the four and the seven. But under this much pressure, it's got to be tough. He overcut it. Oh, he overcut it. What a great shot. And sitting on the bench, Bob Learn takes the lead by 10 pins. As you can see, just doesn't get enough of the two pin. Slides it in front of the four and the seven. And a heartbreak for Jason Couch. Thought he had a good shot at making it, but 195 through nine, he can shoot 225. Needs to strike out to force Learn to strike on the first ball and then spare to end up in a tie. Still a possibility of a tie here in this championship match of the U.S. Open. Needs to keep the speed up. That's what got him in trouble on the last frame. Well, lost his form a little bit. It's a two, the four, and the seven, and now, with a spare here in the 10th frame, he'll force learn, he'll force, uh, learn to get up and, and mark, but uh, you know any kind of mark would win. Bob Learn sitting, waiting, still has to come up in the 10th frame, looking for his fourth PBA title. Jason Couch, he has uh, won five. Spare and strike, that's 215. Must make this. <laughs> Takes care of the 247. Important to get a good fill here. Needs nine pins to force Learn to mark in the 10th. Sometimes that can be tough to do sitting there, right, Marshall? Needing just a mark? Well, a lot, you know, I always made better shots if I needed to strike in the 10th frame. I didn't always throw the strike, but I would make, I would put the ball into the pocket. A lot of times when you just need a mark, you get a little careful. If you get careful, the ball can go right to the nose. A little better speed and 2.15 for Jason Couch. Bob Learn in the 10th. Set it up for us. Well, any kind of a mark. Bob Learn's been making very good shots. The last couple of frames, he's left the, the soft 10 pin. You know, with as much as his ball is hooking into the pocket, I, the only thing that can get in his way is a solid 7.10 right now. Here it comes. There's the strike. Bob and there's your champion. With a huge strike in the 10th frame, and Bob Learn is your champion of the U.S. Open. Wonder how his back's feeling right now as he slides right down. There's Stacy and Brittany, and uh, that's right. Daddy just won the big one. Bob Learn picks up his uh, fourth national title, but this one, uh, I don't know, that first one's always special, but this has to rank up there because Bob has gone through a tough time over the past couple years. Well, he has, and this is a, this is a major title. This is certainly going to be the sweetest one. He came through in the clutch. All right, let's take a look now at the AMF frame of the match. And it came here late in this uh, championship match. Well, it was Bob Learn in the 10th frame. He needs any kind of a mark, Phil. Anything. Well, that's the best kind of mark you can possibly get. A solid strike. Took care of all the business. He runs it out, and he goes down for a victory slide. <laughs> AMF frame of the day. Bob Learn wrapping up the U.S. Open title. And he'll finish out with a 231. So Bob Learn Jr., 231, and Jason Couch, 215. Exciting. A great match. Very exciting. Bob Learn Jr., first major. Congratulations to Bob Learn Jr., winner of the 1999 Bowling U.S. Open. Coming up next on ESPN, the DeMaria Golf from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, Go.com. For my partners, Marshall Holman, along with Jan Schmidt, I'm Phil Ferguson, saying so long from Uncasville, Connecticut. It's been the U.S.